Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Do me a favor, quickly go below, hit thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. But today I kind of wanted to open this discussion with you guys and talk about the Google Pixel and the Tensor chipset. Now, as you guys know, there is a lot of controversy around the Tensor chipset and the performance and capabilities it brings to the table in comparison to other flagships like the Galaxy S25 Ultra, the OnePlus 13. You've got the Xiaomi's, the Oppo's, the Vivo's, you know, all of these devices that are packing the flagship chip from either MediaTek or Qualcomm. And the Tensor chipset has been a topic of many hot debates on the internet and around the smartphone community. So I kind of wanted to give my take on it and my experience with the Pixel devices. So pretty much there's kind of two outlooks on the Tensor chipset. There are those who say, you know, in day-to-day -day tasks, it performs just fine, and that is true. I can honestly say that from my experience, it is true. The day-to-day -day experience is very good, very usable, it's very smooth, just as smooth as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Snapdragon 8 Elite, all of those. And there are those who go more in-depth with real-world heavy workloads and also in gaming, and they find that the Tensor chipset just does not stack up to Qualcomm or MediaTek. Now, I'm not entirely sure on this number I'm about to tell you guys, but I believe maybe overall across many different tests, the Tensor G4 is probably at least 20% behind the latest from Qualcomm and MediaTek. It may be a little less, it may be a little more, but I would say thereabouts. You know, it's, it's about like two generations behind Qualcomm. And although the day-to-day -day experience and capabilities of the Pixel devices is very good. When you factor in the price Google is asking, it feels like a bit of a punch to the gut, you know? I know not everyone is running benchmarks every single day. That's just unrealistic. Everyone is not doing heavy workloads on their devices every single day. But when you have similar products from competitors, people are going to compare them. And in these scenarios, the Tensor just does not hold up. And that doesn't automatically make the Pixel devices a bad device. I think it just means the price is a little too high. Now the build quality, the display, everything about this Pixel 9 Pro is a flagship device. The only minor drawback is that Tensor chipset, and that has been the case for a very long time with the Pixels. Google has worked very hard over the last few years to solve many, many bugs and issues with the Pixel devices. And the Pixel 9 Pro is a good device, but in my opinion, it just needs to be cheaper. You know, when you compare it, if we bring in the OnePlus 13 here, right, this device starts at $900, okay? 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, Snapdragon 8 Elite. I mean, this is a flagship device. And then you look at the Pixel 9 Pro, this starts at $1,000. I mean, of course there's sales, but we're just talking about baseline price here. It starts at $1,000, $100 more than the OnePlus 13, a true flagship device. And it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem right. You know, when I look at the Pixel 9 Pro and, and you really think about it, in my opinion, I think it should be about $750. You know, as I said, I know not everyone is running benchmarks or doing heavy workloads on their devices all day long. So yeah, the day-to-day -day usability is as good as a flagship such as the OnePlus 13. But when you have two similarly priced products from competing companies, people are going to find ways to compare them and separate them. And that's what some tech reviewers do. Some people out there do use their devices for heavy workloads. So this stuff matters to them. And we can't just ignore the fact that Google is asking a flagship price for a device that, in terms of the chipset, is not a flagship, and that just doesn't really sit well with many tech reviewers. I think if the Pixel 9 Pro could start at $750 and then the Pro XL at $850, I think that would be a much more compelling option in the market. And even the OnePlus 13R, I believe those start at $599. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, as far as I know, still outpaces the Tensor G4, right? A $600 phone. And then the Poco F7 Ultra, I've never tried a Poco phone, but the Poco F7 Ultra just came out for $650, and it has the Snapdragon 8 Elite. So it kind of makes you take a step back even more and like, whoa, what the heck, Google? Why are you asking $999 for a Pixel 9 Pro 
that although this is a flagship device in many ways, it's all it always comes back to the chipset. And and I just really hate that for the Pixel. I want to see the Pixel excel. You know, the software is good, although it's not my favorite Android software experience. It is good overall, and it just seems to always come back to that Tensor chipset being a drawback for the Pixel. So I'm hoping later this year the Tensor G5 gets closer to the latest and greatest from Qualcomm and MediaTek. I don't think it will match it. I just don't. But if it could get within like, I don't know, 10% of these chips from Qualcomm and MediaTek, I think that would be good enough. But it all comes back to price. Again, this is not a bad device. It's a flagship in many ways. And although you may not agree with the tech reviewers who do these heavy workloads to show the difference between the chipsets, it is a real comparison. It's a real scenario. And I hope that the Pixel 10 with the Tensor G5 is a good leap forward in performance to get closer to the true flagship devices. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I would love to hear your take on the Tensor chipset. Also, do you think the Pixel devices need to be cheaper? I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you in the next video.